I made some homemade sweet potato biscuits last night, and so I'm gonna put some more honey uh, butter on them. I made a homemade corned beef hash. As soon as the eggs are ready, they have to go out. Rodney, I need your help. So this is Rodney, he's the sous chef. I serve uh, fried apples here because my grandmother used to fix fried apples. Some of these uh, pots and pans are pans that uh, my grandparents used to use. Cast iron pan, we know that's the best pan for cooking. <laughs> my grandfather, he built this house in 1914. He was a fisherman and a farmer. He had the help of his brother and his cousin to build a house. I think uh, 1912 was when they got married. To ride their bikes after work with their tools on it was no little effort. When my parents first got married, they lived in this house with my grandparents. I lived here until I was about four, and I always had fond memories of it. It was always a place of love. That's why I have a big love sign in front of the house. I remember my father built us a swing out on one of the trees, and we would swing. And I mean, this was just a place where we just had a lot of fun. We used to play this as children. <laughs> so this was the party. <laughs> <laughs> this painting here is uh, of what the house actually looked like when we lived in there. The house had been boarded up for many years. And we kind of had a family meeting for us to decide what we were going to do, what we are going to do. The family said, oh, let's tear that old house down. And my brother, uh, he always likes to get credit for this. You love to have people at your house. You love, you know, he says, why don't you do a bed and breakfast? These hard hats are from when we did the groundbreaking. <laughs> Even the builder, who did a great job, he would say, why don't you just tear the house down? I'll build you a nicer, bigger. I said, no. And so we had to have a crane come in and lift the house up to build a foundation. He says, when we lift that house up, the chimney just going to fall through it, and you're going to have to redo it. I like, if it does, we'll just deal with it then. And it, the chimney's still there. I make uh, fried green tomatoes. And um, I have an herb garden out there as well. Sometimes with my corned beef hash, I put, uh, I do fried eggs and set them on top. I worked as a contractor for NASA for 20 years and then for NOAA for 22 years. NOAA is National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. In my field, I work with a lot of scientists and engineers. There weren't a lot of women, there weren't a lot of African Americans. For my voice to be heard sometimes, I had to speak a little louder or whatever. Initially I did, um, we built antennas and put software on it. And so we were having a discussion, these are the scientists and the engineers, about what the problem was, you know, that we were seeing. PhD guy on the board just writing out his math and saying, this is why he thinks this is the problem. So I say, well, there's an error there. Then I was arrogant. You could be smart as long as you're quiet about it. In my early career, those kind of things uh, affected how aggressively I sought to do things. My parents instilled in me, well, for me, they would say, you're a Jackson, so the Jacksons are gonna do this, we're gonna succeed, you're gonna be successful, or whatever, so uh, I just kind of would change my approach. But I mean, they respected me well enough that I retired, and before I retired, they wanted to know if I'll come back and consult. <laughs> I said, let me get some time in retirement first. And I said, come down here on the weekends. And when I would cross the Potomac River Bridge in East Bridge, you put the convertible back and you just let the wind blow through your hair. It's just so refreshing to come to this rural area. My passion is cooking. Really, when I say it's a place of love, that's what I feel about being here. And then that's what I try to share with others when they come. I had a, a lady come up to me and she said, when my mother died, she said, your grandmother would fix dinner for my family every Sunday. I just continuing that legacy. In the black community, that relationship was very strong. 
So people were willing to help each other when you couldn't depend on other population of people to help. You had to come together and, and put resources together. There we have it. <laughs> Everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be loved. Whenever I go back to Maryland, everybody's blowing their horns and, you know, trying to cut in and out of traffic. And so, to me, this is just um, a peaceful place.